Ladies and gentlemen, my next guest this evening is the greatest composer and lyricist in the history of the American theater. Please welcome to The Late Show, Stephen Sondheim. <laughs> Nice to, it's nice to see you again. Thanks for being Good here. Too, yeah. You know, I got a chance to interview a couple of times at uh, the Colbert Report, and and one of the things that you said to me then was that as as a young man, you were lucky enough to be mentored by Oscar Hammerstein II. I've got a photo of the two of you right here. Ah, there oh. you are. That's uh, was there's Hammerstein. There's you. Sixteen years. Sixteen years old. You haven't changed at all, kid. You look. <laughs> you look fantastic. For the, you know, for the people out there, the burgeoning uh, Sondheims out there, what is it that he taught you that still sticks with you today as a composer and as a lyricist? Uh, majorly, majorly, he taught me to write for myself, because I, I wrote songs that imitated him. He said, no, write what you feel. Uh, if, you know, if, uh, he said, this is what I feel about you know, love and humanity. You write what you feel. And that was important because you'd think that would be natural, but it's not. It's not. Particularly if, if, if you think highly of the person that you're imitating, which I did. Sure. You know? How long did it take you to, you know, it's not a switch you can flip. How long no, no. I, no. It took me, uh, it, well, I was writing a, a score. I was writing a, a musical right after I got out of college. And it took me the time it took to write that musical. The musical <laughs> ended up not very good, but I'd learned my lesson. And... Uh, and it sounded like me, which wasn't necessarily the best thing. Well, <laughs> are you still writing, by the way? Uh, yes, I am. You are? Well, that's yeah. good. Yeah. Not everybody composes into their 90s. <laughs> you know, I, I've been working on a show for a couple of years with a playwright named David Ives. Mm -hmm. And um, it's, it's called Square One. And um, we had a reading of it last week, and we were encouraged. So we're going to go ahead with it, and with any luck, we'll get it on next season. You, you and your collaborator... <laughs> you and your collaborator, James Lapine, wrote a book called Putting It Together, which is about the two of you creating Sunday in the Park with George. What, what's your favorite part about working with Lapine? Oh, uh, James is... Um, he will... He's a generation younger than I, and he will go anywhere. He'll try anything. Uh, I, I was brought up more conservatively, which is, it's, the number has got to be, or the scene has got to be perfect before you go into rehearsal. And he said, no, let's see where we go. Let's see, see how it goes. So it's the improvisatory uh, aspect of his generation, and uh, that was very good for me. It loosened me up. And that was, that was uh, a great deal of fun to write with him for just that reason. Well, I, I, I was, n nicely enough, um, uh, I got a, a, a note from uh, James Lapine asking me if I would blurb the book. Oh, boy, and, thank you for that. That blurb is and great. And I, I want to just read it to these people out here, because it's Please. a true story, and I'd love to say it to you. You may already know this, but when I was 19, I read the lyrics of putting it together to my mother to say that this is what I wanted to do with my life, even though I had no idea of what this might be. Mm. I couldn't sing like Mandy Patinkin. I couldn't compose like Sondheim. I couldn't write or direct like James Lapine. But like Seurat's hat, that play was a window from this world to that. And I will always be grateful to you for laying out the, the desire and the beauty of the act of creation itself, regardless of where that may take you. When I read that, I was touched, and I'm touched again. Thank, so thank you. For the rest of my life. Thank you. Now, uh, Broadway fully opened this week, which is yeah, fantastic. Yeah, isn't that great? And soon, a uh, company, uh, your, your your musical company, is coming back in November, this time swapping the gender uh, of male-female of Bobby and right. the other members of the cast. Have you seen it yet? Oh, yeah, I saw it in London. And also, it, we had a week of previews here before the pandemic closed everything down. So, so there. It's a wonderful production. Highly recommend it. 
And um, I don't usually tout my own stuff, but I urge everybody here to see it. <laughs> I have a date with Christine Baranski. She's yeah, taking me. She asked me oh, to go with her. You're going to have such a good time. <laughs> it's really one of the most entertaining evenings I've ever had in the theater. It's just great. And this lady, Marion Elliott, who directed it, is just remarkable. Now, uh, uh, in December, we'll get to see Steven Spielberg's version of oh, West Side yeah. Story. Mm -hmm. And uh, you visited the set. Here we go. There's another. There you are with Steven Spielberg on the set. Oh. You visited while they were shooting. Yeah. What, what can you tell us? What, oh, what do you it's, know? it's terrific. Again, touting my own work. No, it's really <laughs> terrific. Everybody go. It'll, you'll really have a good time. <laughs> and for those of you who know the show, there are going to be some real surprises in it because Tony Kushner, who wrote the screenplay, has done some really imaginative and surprising things with the way the songs are used in the, in the, in the story. And um, the whole thing is, has real sparkle to it and real energy, and it feels fresh. It's just, it's really first rate. And movie musicals are hard to do, and this one, Spielberg and Kushner really, really nailed it. Well, it's lovely to see you again. Thank you for coming on. Oh, my pleasure. And I look pleasure. forward to Square One. Oh, my player, my, my Square One, indeed. <laughs> there you okay. Go. Thank, 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 thank you. Thank you, Steve. Previews for Company on Broadway start November 15th. Stephen Sondheim, everybody. That's it for The Late Show. Tune in tomorrow, and my guest will be Melissa McCarthy.